Welcome back. In the next few videos, we look at machine learning algorithms that search for similarity in data observations. Some are supervised and some are unsupervised. In this video, we look at KNN, K nearest neighbors, which is a supervised algorithm but does not form a model of the data. There is no training. All that happens is that the data is read and processed. For testing an observation, its K nearest neighbors are found. That's shown conceptually here with the new observation as the black square and K equals three neighbors around it. For classification, a majority vote is taken for the nearest observations. In this case, two green and one yellow, so the classification would be green. One of the nice things about KNN is that you can use it for classification or regression. For regression, an average is taken of the target values of the closest neighbors. Let's take a quick look at KNN classification in R. This notebook looks at the familiar iris data set. I went ahead and attached the data and looked at the structure. When we plot, we can see that any nearest neighbor in this red region here will be easy to classify, as would any in the green if it were in this region or the far upper right region. It may be a little difficult in this middle region here. Here I'm showing an alternate way to divide into train and test. We can sample two, which will just sample the numbers one and two, and assign with probabilities 67 to 33% between one and two. And then I will use those one or two indices here to divide into train and test. For K and N, another difference is that the train and test should not have the labels. The labels need to be kept separate. For K and N classification, we're gonna import library class Let's look at the arguments to the KNN function. The first argument is just the training columns, not including the target, the test columns, the third argument is the training labels, and then finally we have our K value. One disadvantage of KNN is that we have to specify K beforehand, when we may not know what the optimal K will be. Later in the video, we'll look at cross-validation to find the best K. Notice here I calculated accuracy a little differently since there are three classes instead of two. The accuracy was 98%, but then this is a very easy data set. Next, let's look at a regression example. This notebook performs KNN regression on the auto data in package ISLR. I have a link here in the notebook to the ISLR book, which is a great free resource. There's also a set of videos available at this link. So first I'm loading ISLR, attaching auto, changing origin to a factor, and looking at the data with structure. The origin is a three-level factor based on whether the car is American, European, or Japanese. We'll divide into train and test, and then build a linear regression model with all of the predictors. We evaluate on the test data, and we get a correlation of almost 0.9, and a mean squared error of about 14.6. So we're off on predicting the miles per gallon by about 16. Let's compare with KNN. I'm going to use the library caret for the KNN regression. KNN can't handle factors, so we have to convert those factors to integers. The first argument is the training data, and the second argument is the training labels. Here we'll specify k equals 3. When we ran the algorithm, we can see over here that our correlation for KNN was a little bit lower than for linear regression and our mean squared error was higher, this didn't perform as well straight out of the box as linear regression. KNN will perform better if we scale the data. This code right here will scale the data. We're going to go ahead and omit the name of the car and we're not gonna scale our target. 
Notice that when we scaled, we used the means and the standard deviations of just the training data and applied that to both train and test to scale them. This is considered a best practice so that information about the test data doesn't leak into the scaling. Now when we try KNN on the scale data, we get much better results. Correlation is almost 0.91 and MSC is down to 14.4. In the last run of KNN, we just arbitrarily chose the value k equals 3. Let's try many different values and plot them to find the best result. I'm letting k go between 1 and 39, increasing by 2, specifying my k value as that k, fitting the model and calculating correlation in MSC, which will be vectors. And then we plot. In the red, we see the correlation pretty much zigzags a little bit, but pretty much goes down the larger the K is, and the MSE goes up. So this is a little bit unusual, but the best K for this particular data was K equal 1. We can verify that programmatically by using which.min and which.max. It just so happened that the correlation was highest for K equal 1, and the MSE was lowest also for k equals 1. So we try that again for k equals 1. This is the only thing that changed here. And this is the highest correlation that we've gotten so far, 0.93 almost, and the lowest MSE. So this best model that we found so far was off by an average of 10 miles per gallon in the mileage. If we're doing classification, for a given test observation x sub i, the k closest points are found. The class assignment will be the majority class. Here i is an indicator function of true or false. For regression, the average of the neighbor's target value is taken. nb in this formula is the set of neighbors. The choice of k is very important. If we choose smaller values, the result will have low bias and high variance, and it will be more susceptible to noise. As we increase k, the boundaries become less flexible, bias increases, and variance decreases. Also, computation time increases. Some classifiers are very sensitive to the number of predictors. That's called the curse of dimensionality. KNN is one of those algorithms. In contrast, Naive Bayes is not sensitive to the number of predictors. For classification, it's a good idea to let K be odd, since it's taking a majority vote. The best way to find the optimal K is through cross-validation, which we'll talk about a little later. The algorithm is named K nearest neighbor, but what do we mean by near? We could use Euclidean distance. But notice that the difference is squared, and then we take the square root. That's a lot of computation there. So often a lot of implementations use simple variance. In either formula, the predictors need to be numeric. So factors should either be eliminated or converted to integers. We did that in the auto data set with car origin, which was a factor of three levels. Does it really make sense to have 1, 2, and 3 as values there? Probably not, since that implies some kind of order when these are just pure factors. So perhaps it might have made more sense to leave that factor out. We also found in our notebook that scaling resulted in better performance, which makes sense because we're calculating distance. And so we want all of our predictors to be on the same scale. You'll hear these two terms a lot in machine learning, scaling and normalization. Scaling is just a linear transformation to make the data fit in some range, for example, between 0 and 1. Normalization transforms the data to follow a normal distribution. R's built-in scale function, using just the defaults, will transform the data to have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. In the last notebook, we found an optimal K by just trying out a different values. A common technique to do that is k-fold cross-validation. And the idea is shown here for 10-fold cross-validation. 
what you do is you divide the data into 10 groups, sometimes called 10 folds, and then you run the algorithm 10 times, each time letting a different chunk being the test data. It turns out that either 5-fold or 10-fold cross-validation tend to get the best results. Don't confuse the K here with the K and K and N. They don't have anything to do with each other. So common uses for cross-fold validation are going to be what we're going to do next, which is to tune some parameters dealing with the algorithm, in our case, K. But cross-validation can also be useful if you have very small data set. So you could run the algorithm k times, each time letting one portion be the test set and then average the results together. Let's look at an example of doing k-fold cross-validation in R. Here I'm loading the auto data set again, and this time just subsetting it to the columns miles per gallon, weight, year, and origin. We're going to use the create folds function in library caret to take our data and make 10 folds. To get a better idea here, let's just print the indices for each fold. This next block of code will perform 10-fold cross-validation. Again, we're setting up some vectors to hold our MSE and our correlation, and we're selecting based on the folds, and averaging over all of the 10 runs of the data. We get an average correlation of 0.93, we also printed out the range, and an average MSE of 0.16. Let's, do the, let's repeat the same code, but also try various k. This code will run over the 10 folds and vary k as well. We put our results in a matrix form, which we'll plot below. Again, in red, we see our correlation for various values of k and our MSE. We seem to have around 5 in this region, a good correlation, and a good MSE. K and N is the first algorithm that we've looked at that's non-parametric. What we mean by that is it doesn't learn any coefficients like we've seen in the linear models, or any probabilities like we saw in Naive Bayes. In fact, it doesn't learn much at all. K and N is sometimes called instance-based learning, or lazy learning, because it doesn't build a model, it doesn't cluster the data, it just reads in the data and then will find nearest neighbors for test observations. Recall our earlier discussion about small k leading to high variance and larger k increasing bias and possibly bogging down for large data sets. K and N has a lot of advantages. Number one, that it can be used for classification and regression. It does have some disadvantages. If you have high dimensions, it may bog down. The k parameter may take some work to find the optimal value, and you have to scale the data. Also, k and n is not interpretable. All that we're saying for our test observations is that they're similar to other observations. As usual, we have a quick reference section at the end of the chapter. Remember that we use two different libraries and two different functions if we're doing classification versus regression. I also showed different methods of scaling. Scaling here at this last method, method 2, is preferable. Many of the algorithms we'll study going forward perform better with scaling, including the next algorithm we'll look at, k-means clustering. <laughs>